welcome to church. We just want to invite the presence of the Lord. We're going to ask you to stand up, put your hands together, just lift up the name of the Lord where you are. Because, Lord, we need you this morning. We need your power, your might, your goodness, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Watch the waters part before us now. Watch the waters part before us now. Come and see what He has done for us. Tell the world of His great love, our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who saves.
to lift our hands to you, to glorify you. To, to We choose to trust you, God. We fix our eyes on you, Lord. And Lord, we just want to sing out to you, Lord, to just glorify who you are, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. We soften our hearts. We soften our hearts, God. Jesus.
our church, Jesus. You reign in our homes, Lord God, in our city, in our country, Lord. You reign over all of our problems, Lord God. Father, your blood that you shed, Lord, knew that this was coming. You paid every price, Lord God, that we needed, Lord. Father, every strength, every healing that we have, Lord, you reign over it all, Lord. You've already paid for it, Jesus. We thank you that you are still Lord. You are Lord over all, Lord God. You reign, Lord Jesus. And we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You reign, Lord God. We claim the victory that you have already paid for over our lives this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you for your victory, Jesus. Good morning, friends, and it's so good to be together and to hear the presence of our Lord and feel his presence here with us this day. I want to pray together. You know, prayer is an interesting thing. I learned some things about it this week. Did you know that areas of your brain are activated by certain things? So a friend of mine who was a missionary in China for many years he lost the activity in his brain where it allowed him to speak Chinese. He had to return from the mission field. He couldn't go back. Well, prayer comes out of your brain in a spot where just prayer activates it. Don't let your brain go to sleep by not praying. So let's pray together. Father, thank you for the wonderful privilege we have of knowing you and loving you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all you have given to us. And on this Thanksgiving weekend, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Guide and direct us and show us how to see peace come on earth again where there's such conflict. Give us wisdom how to share your word with people who don't know you. And give us faith, Lord, to see the will and purpose of God fulfilled in our lives and in those around us. We ask for your blessing and your peace and your guidance in Jesus' name, and may your provision be part of our lives. Amen. God bless you, each one. Good morning, LGBT family and friends, and happy Thanksgiving. We have two verses of scripture for you today, and they tie in together so beautifully. The first comes from Hebrews 11, verses 1 to 3, and it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. The second verse comes from 2 Corinthians 5, 7, and it says, For we live by faith, not by sight. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. Hi church, Pastor Jenny here. I just want to say happy Thanksgiving to you and to your family, whatever it looks like this weekend. I hope that you find yourself just so thankful to the Lord for all that he's done in your life, all he's doing. And I know things look different this year, but we have so much to be thankful for. Amen. I'm really thankful because I have an exciting announcement for all of you. We are transitioning to in-person services in the building starting on October the 18th. So for the first few weeks of doing in the building services, we'd like to start with one main service and it will happen at 10.30 a.m. So that's a little different of a time, so I hope that you caught that. So starting on October the 18th, we're gonna be in the building, in the sanctuary at 10.30 a.m. We're gonna do that one service for a few weeks and then we may begin to add in some other services as well. So I wanted to give you some things to expect. As you know, the church has been undergoing pretty big renovation. So the foyer is mostly complete. We've got new carpeting in there. We're excited for you to see it. We have new floor tiles at the entrance. The ceiling is higher. There's new paint color on the wall and it's looking beautiful and we can't wait for you to see it. As you know, the sanctuary has also been undergoing a major renovation project as well. So it's looking really good too. There's drywalling done, there's fresh paint on the walls, there's new lighting in the ceiling and everything. We are waiting though still on the carpeting piece. So that's a big section of the project and that won't happen for another few weeks. So we're gonna be in the building and in the sanctuary before the carpeting is done. 
that means there's a few other things still in process as well. So it's going to sound a little echoey when we first meet in there when we're worshiping, but I just think it's going to be wonderful just to fill that sanctuary with praise, with people. Amen. So we just invite you and encourage you to come and bring your family. That service at the 1030 a.m. is for all ages, and it's really going to be geared toward families. We're going to continue having a kid's portion of the actual service itself. So there will be a skin and a Bible story for kids during the service and a kid's song after the kid's song. All the children will be dismissed for, for Sunday school as well, and they'll be able to actually go to the lower level um, for their Sunday school class if that's something that would be of interest to your family. So we're really excited about it. There is still lots to do at the church, and even when we're meeting in person, it's going to be different because of COVID. And so there's going to be um, just different things that we need help with. If you'd like to volunteer or you'd like to help us with making this transition, we would love your help. So just send an email to the church at info at lgt.org. Whether you just want to let us know that you plan to attend or whether you want to help, just send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Also, if you're not comfortable coming in person just yet, that's fine too. We're happy for you to continue watching online and we're going to continue just investing in our online services. So 9, 15, 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. are going to continue to go forward as they have been this whole time. So I just wanted to let you know this is really exciting, um, a, a transition that we're going to have and we hope that you'll be a part of it. And I know it's going to be a real blessing just to be able to be together to be in the building and it's going to be wonderful so if you have any questions you can always call the church or email the church and i hope you just have a wonderful rest of your weekend with your family and i hope this sermon coming up next from pastor paul is really going to bless and encourage you talk to you soon hi everyone on this thanksgiving sunday we're going to be looking forward to seeing those of you that can make it next Sunday. We're going to be moving here into the auditorium. Uh, the foyer is going to be done and uh, there's not really much left to do out there. Uh, when we come in here, it'll be a few weeks before the carpet's in, but uh, al almost all the other work's done. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you. We're going to keep seeing you online. And this Thanksgiving weekend, I'm so glad that I can be with you and sharing the scripture with you today. Lots of announcements about when we come back in person. We are going to start uh, with one service, as we mentioned in our announcements. And then a few weeks later, we're going to start uh, probably, Lord willing, is probably the best way to put it these days, uh, as long as we're able to meet uh, according to the health uh, guidelines and what we're able to do. We'll be having probably a second one. We'll be informing you as well about that for those that are really wanting to isolate, especially uh, a little earlier in the day. And Pastor Smith will be preaching at that. On this Thanksgiving weekend, it's just a bit uh, different. It's an unnerving thing to live today. How on earth, with a heavy heart, with COVID and everything going on, the lockdowns are telling us we can't even really see a lot of our relatives and stay in small uh, family units this weekend. But how do you celebrate Thanksgiving? How, how can you be thankful in the midst of this? Now, I mean, this is fine. We're in the church and it's almost uh, completely done and we're getting a carpet in a few weeks, but other than that, everything's good, but the world is so crazy. We've been looking at a series of uh, scriptures and looking at the life of Moses, David, Abraham, and Joseph. And there's a scripture we read last week, how uh, we can be thankful even in the midst of difficult times. We give thanksgiving to the Lord and have joy in our heart, even when things aren't what we would say going well on the outside. I'm going to look a bit in depth today at this concept of how you can be thankful, how, how you can, you know, it's like uh, in COVID, you know, usually Thanksgiving is about, you know, what we've been provided with and food and we're uh, thinking of the blessings that we have. But uh, we look at our life right now and I think in many ways, this is the real Thanksgiving. This is like what it means. We're going to look today about the real thankfulness that can come in your heart that isn't even guided by your circumstances outside of you. you did you know that you can have a thankfulness in your heart that isn't determined by uh, the five senses? And we're going to look at that today. So this is an incredible message. We're going to have the same message in the parking lot. When we looked at David, we looked at Moses, we looked at Joseph, we looked at Abraham, we talked about their lives. 
And uh, the thing that they did, which was maybe different um, than a lot of the way the world would uh, see how you can be happy right now, is they uh, is what's called endured. They had an endurance that uh, God helped them with. So when we look at the concept of endurance, we say to ourselves, how on earth do you, uh, you know, you don't, you, you don't defer, you endure. I think a lot of people in their heads are like, well, I just need to defer all my happiness right now. I want to tell you, you don't have to think that way. You don't have to think I can't really be happy this year. I have to defer till COVID's over. You can be thankful now. There is nothing that should enable uh, you uh, in terms of the things of the Lord to defer. God's not wanting you to defer. God doesn't want you to get down. You can be thankful today. So how do you do that? Well, in the last few weeks, we've looked at this in terms of enduring, but not enduring with a sad face, enduring in terms of uh, relating to God and being thankful, having joy, your outside circumstances not dictating uh, joy being deferred. You can have thankfulness now and joy that's real. So I want to look at this and how we do it is, and I'm going to get uh, pretty technical here, and we're going to talk about faith, endurance, and how that can create in you a thankful heart. The word faith that we uh, look at when we talk about faith in the Bible, you see there's one particular verse that often comes to mind. And in this, uh, it's called the faith chapter, it's Hebrews chapter 11. In this faith chapter, you see that faith is not reserved just, uh, you know, for people in the past. It's for you today. So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him, that's God, must believe that he exists and he rewards those who seek him or seek after him. Depends on the translation, but it, it comes through pretty clearly. If you have faith in God, you believe that he is um, God. That's what we often think. It kind of, that's what it means. But it doesn't just say that. It says you must believe God and that you must believe that he exists. That's the one we get. But then it says this, and that he rewards those who diligently or who seek him diligently or just seek him. So if you seek the Lord, he'll reward you. And this is kind of the kickoff point of how you can have a thanksgiving, even when everything's not perfect, and be thankful and endure. But endure with joy and, and thankfulness in your heart. Faith in the Bible, I think there's a lot of misconstrued understanding of how or what faith really is. The word faith comes from the Greek, because the Hebrew, uh, sorry, the Hebrew is the Old Testament. The Greek is the New Testament. The Greek word here that we see in the New Testament is a word called pistis, which it doesn't just mean faith. Whenever you see in the Bible faithfulness or faith, it's the exact same word. In secular ancient Greek, it was always faithfulness. Now, the word faithfulness there is like what we think of as loyalty today. I'm loyal to God. Like a kid can be loyal to their family and loyal to their friends. Even a little kid, a four-year-old, can be loyal. So faith, like a child, faithfulness is similar to our concept or our construct, which is uh, loyalty. And faith and faithfulness is the same word every time in the Bible. So it's never just a faith. You know, you look at it. It's, it, it also means faithfulness. So I want to explain something here. Faith, when we talk about it here, it's not a dogma. It's not like a creed. It's not intellectually accepting faith here it's not just a doctrine it's a question and this is really important to get to where we want to go today it's a question of committing ourselves to god that's what faith really means in the bible and this commitment which is the basis of faith establishes and you see it in hebrews chapter 11 it establishes a direct ongoing personal relationship with god so when you have faith it's not just that you believe or you've researched and you say, I'm a Christian because I can uh, quote these three scriptures. It's great to quote the scriptures, but that's not what it means. Faith is a commitment. It's a committing ourselves to God. And this commitment, which is the basis of faith, establishes this direct, ongoing, personal relationship. And then when you give yourself to God, God gives you, gives you himself, which is pretty amazing. So I just want to nail this down. Then we're going to look at a bunch of scripture, but you have to be committed. 
So this commitment, you have to give yourself in that relationship. Any relationship you have with a wife or a husband, at Thanksgiving, we're often celebrating sitting around a table with people or having fun with family. You're committed to that family. It's the same with God. You have to give yourself in the relationship and in return, God gives himself back to you. It's a relationship, so it's not a doctrine. It's really important to say this because I think a lot of people think I'm a Christian because I just say these things or I, I think these things or I know what this is, but that's not what it means. The Greek does not mean that and it's not that in, in the Bible. And so let's look at this. It's how we're related to God then. You think in terms of the word, and I said it, the, the best way to describe faithfulness or faith. See, sometimes we get these religious terms. Th these words get religious. And uh, the way we would say it now, like mo in modern language, is that you're loyal. It's like little kids can be very loyal. It's loyal. You're loyal to, to God. If you're loyal to someone, that's the way faith is represented in the Bible. You're loyal. That means through thick or thin, you're going to stick by God. We know that God's loyal to us or faithful to us. But you see, when you have faith, you, it means that you're, you're doing that. It's really important to say this. You're loyal. Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, you say, well, what does that have to do with faith? This is kind of the whole point. True security stems out of that personal relationship with God. Probably the biggest thing that the people in the world are struggling with right now is security. There's no security. Faith gives you security. The Lord is my shepherd. That's when you're committed, when you're following, when you're faithful, when you're loyal to the voice of the Lord then you have security. So what's important to say here is faith of this, it's not this sort, this is the only sort. I think people, the, the church, not necessarily our church, but the church for centuries is kind of taught that faith, faith is this belief in creeds. It's a belief in the fundamentals of who Jesus is, but that's not exactly how the Bible puts it. It's not knowledge, it's, it's something in your heart. And security, which is what so many people, it's like, how do I celebrate if I don't feel peaceful? How, how can I be thankful? Security comes, it stems, as it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Shepherd means like a sheep, you're following the Lord, he's taking care of you. You're abiding in his presence and you're secure. It's really important to see this. So true security, like every young person in North America today, like this is people are in a panic about security right now. We don't feel secure because the Lord isn't our shepherd. So when the Lord, when you have that faith where you're faithful to the Lord, when you're faithful to God, that security is part of the package. You know when you buy a cell phone from a certain provider, part of the package is you get this, this, and this. You get a package when you have faith in God and security is one of the things. So I'm going to just look at these scriptures now. Hebrews chapter 11, it says, faith is a conviction of things not seen. It's faith, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, it says, faith is an assurance of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. Now, I'm gonna say this first phrase, faith is assurance of things hoped for. Another word to say that word assurance, when you look at that word, the way we would say it is substance or underlying reality. So faith is the underlying reality of things hoped for. It's the substance or underlying reality. Probably the best way we would say it is underlying reality of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. So what does that mean? Now, if you look around the sanctuary today, you can see the lights. Those are all new lights. It's a whole new ceiling. I can touch the pillar if I walked over there, put my hand on it. Faith relates us to the invisible eternal world, not, not the, the, the substance that you can see world. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Now, when we say that word sight, where you see, uh, w when you look at the scripture, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Like another way of saying that is, Where you see, you don't need to believe. If you see something, you don't need to believe it. You see that, you believe it. You see there's a roof over my head. You see the color of the ceiling is white. You see the lights are bright. You don't need me to tell you that. You can see it right now. So sight here, it doesn't just mean sight in the Greek here. It's the, the, the legitimate interpretation is maybe even just to put it another way is to say, not our senses, like our five senses. Our five senses, like sense perception, smell, this, that, the other thing. 
sight here means our five senses. Our five senses do not relate us to that invisible world. So all five senses are excluded. Sense perception is excluded here. Sense perception, as we participate in our kind of our five senses, our five senses uh, equate us to the material world. It's like space, time kind of world. Faith does not uh, associate you to that. It's really important to hear, to say this. This is kind of the key of uh, what I'm gonna say, how you endure. So then you see, uh, as we keep going in this verse in Hebrew chapter 11, it says, by faith we understand the world was prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was not made by what is visible. So faith is always in regards to what is not visible. Now, I want to look, so this is, that's kind of a primer on faith. And it gets really particular, and I know I kind of gave you a lot of detail here, and you had to have a bit of commitment to stand through there and hear me talk about this today. But I want to just show you then how this works in a pers personal life. So Moses, we talked about Abraham, we talked about Joseph, Technicolor Dreamcoat, uh, saved his family, he was a prince of Egypt, Abraham, the father, of uh, us all, of all who walk by faith, Moses, David, we looked at their lives. Let's look at Moses because Moses, all of them are in this chapter of Hebrews chapter 11. Let's just dissect down into Moses. Moses in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27, it talks about Moses' life. It says, by faith, Moses, he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is unseen. So there is a deliberate paradox in the, in the Bible, in the way it's saying it here. Moses saw the one who is unseen, is what it says. Faith relates us to the invisible or the unseen. So it's important to say this, just hear me. That was why Moses was able to endure persecution, disappointment, frustration, loneliness. How was it Moses you know, he was out of Egypt, he's living in the desert, he didn't do anything, he wanted to set his people free, he's sitting there for 40 years and he's a total failure. But the Bible says here, by faith he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. The king was Pharaoh, by the way, for he endured, see that word, endured, that's incredible, as seeing him who is unseen. How on earth did, Mo so Moses had a promise. Remember all these guys? Abraham had a promise, you're gonna have a kid. Waited 25 years. Moses had a promise. You're gonna set the people free. He waited 40 years. That's 80, 80 times longer than we're waiting in COVID so far. 80 times longer. That's crazy. How was he able to hold out? He endured in faith. He, he held on. He waited for the promise. Joseph waited for the promise. David waited. He was ordained king. He waited. He became king. But he endured. You've got a promise from God this Thanksgiving. And, you know, to be thankful, you can, you can relate and say to God right now, God, I'm not going to look through the five senses right now because that's not faith. Faith does not relate to what's seen with the natural eye or senses. It relates to God based on the Spirit of God in you and the Word of God and the promises that God has put in your heart. You're, you're relating to those things. That's what all of these guys did. That's what Moses did here. How is he able to hold out? Because he watched. It's amazing. It's what it says. He looked at, he kept his eye on the invisible. Now at Thanksgiving, it's kind of crazy to think you're looking, you can be thankful at Thanksgiving by looking at what keeping your eye on not the things that are not visible. But that's kind of the key right now in this world. His relationship, that's Moses. Let's just like the, this one guy, this one aspect of his life where he waited for 40 years to set the people free. His relationship to the invisible through faith enabled him to hold out, to not give up. To, to do, remember what jo, it said about Joseph, the word of the Lord tested him until the, the promise of God came to pass in his life. So here's Moses and he's holding on and he's, he's fighting through and just like you are today probably, a lot of you watching me, there's devastation, there's doubt, there's, there's dilapidation, there's despair, there's, you know, maybe you're not quite that bad, but maybe you're just like, man, I'm getting sick of this. I wanted my family over, I'm alone, I'm this, I'm that. You see this in 2 Corinthians, Paul says the same thing in verse four, verse 16, he says, therefore we do not lose heart. 
Everything that I just said is that, you're losing heart. Paul says, therefore, we do not lose heart, though our outer man or woman is decaying, our inner man is being renewed. How? Because we're, we're putting our faith in God. And th this isn't like bogus. This isn't like made up. It's really important to say this. I think sometimes we get so caught up in thinking, okay, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith, not by sight. But that's like really easy to say, but not easy to do, is it? So right now, it's like Moses, he, this is how he literally did it. Read your Bible. Read Hebrews 11. Not just Moses. You'll see Joseph. You'll see Abraham. You'll see all these people in the Bible doing what we have to do right now to keep it going, to keep it holding on to faith in our heart, not to get our head down. And I'm going to just say this. How on earth do you have optimism right now? See, we're wired inwardly. There's like a wiring on the inside and faith rewires us. Faith wires us to hold on to the gospel, yes, and hold on to the promises of God, yes, but hold on to the things that are invisible, but that are real. These things are real. They will not only change who you are on the inside, eventually they'll change your outside. Moses' outside changed. He changed on the inside and eventually as he kept enduring and holding on it led him to where God had him to go Joseph changed on the inside the word of the Lord tested him he held on he trusted in God he endured by faith and it eventually led him to the promise that God had made for him fifth like how many years like a whole lifespan Abraham held on to the promises God swerved a little bit got an Ishmael but then held on got an Isaac held on held on held on and then he got to the promise. He had his son. And that, that group of people, they're called Israel. You can go there today. The chosen people. They're, it's real. This stuff actually, it becomes reality. It, it comes on the inside first. And then as you hold on, it then in, as you endure, it doesn't mean either that when you endure that it's all bad. You know, as your wiring changes, you have optimism, not based on what you're seeing around you. And I, I'm actually meaning this today. You know, when this church, if you look at that ceiling, that whole ceiling is brand new. The day that the thing started wasn't like fun. But you look at it and you say, you know, God is a way of rebuilding and redoing and renewing. And he can rewire you even in the midst of a terrible time in, in, in lockdown and isolation and missing family, friends, not being, being able to complete the things you can complete. That doesn't mean that God's promises are incomplete in your life. I, I feel this in my heart. God's promises are not incomplete in your life because you're still enduring. You're holding on. You, it's taken longer. It's okay. Allow your heart to be wired through faith to, to, to God's completion. To have joy right now. To have thanksgiving right now. You can feel those feelings. And you can face today. If you're seeking the Lord today and this morning or whenever you're watching today, we want to just claim, God, that scripture, faith, Lord, is the assurance, the underlying reality, the substance of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. God, you've provided precious promises from your word. You've spoken things over our lives. God, there's things that we're hoping for. At this season, Lord, I pray that every person that's here today, we would know we can have joy. We can have thanksgiving. We can be joyful and happy. Lord, not when all of our hopes are in the things we see with our eyes. God, I know it's great to have food. I know it's great to have family. I know it's great to have friend. A friend that sticks closer than a brother, though, is the kind of faith we're talking about. God, I pray that we wouldn't have our emotions collide this Thanksgiving and just be battling because we have always had hope in things that are, are things that are seen, the things that we feel with our five senses. But God, I pray that each one of us would remember that we we just resist the temptation in our mind to get spoiled by just having the things that we see with our senses. God, may we have the things of our heart joyfully engage in faith. May something rejoice, something kick in that's a promise. Lord, faith is that conviction of things not seen, things, an assurance of things hoped for in you. And God, that's how we will get through this together. Lord, not by pride, not by power, not by might. The Bible says, uh, not by might nor by power, Lord, but by your spirit. 
God, that we can move whatever mountain we're facing today in faith. And God, I pray even on this, t- this is probably a tough day for a lot of us this Thanksgiving. But God, we just resist in the name of Jesus. We endure. We don't give up. We don't, Lord, whatever stage we're in in COVID, wherever we're watching this, I pray that at this, we would not be t- critical at this juncture, but we would have a fast assurance to the things that are invisible, like Moses, like David, like Joseph, like Abraham did. God, I thank you, Lord, for every friend online today. I thank you for everyone that's going to be in the parking lot. I pray that people would feel safe to come back even into this building in church even next Sunday and the next weeks to come and when Pastor Britt has people come back Lord we just pray your blessing on every person that's listening online and part of our church or people that maybe have never even been into this church I just pray that in their situation that whatever they face today that they would know that God you're with them that you have a hope and a promise that you you're a God who keeps his promises and that we would see that assurance rise in our heart today. Not just that we would see the thing come to pass in our life, but we would see the thing, the assurance come to rise in our heart today to know you're able. You've promised it. You've made a commitment. And by faith, God, we make a commitment to hold on. We are loyal and faithful to you as well. May we not swerve. We're going to get through this together with you and with each other in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.